and we're here to look at a Palomar 90A. Guys love these things, and they love them because they like to buy them so they can get like their, you know, their tram or their um, browning, whatever, and kick it up a couple hundred watts to drive into their SP220 or whatever. This is actually a pretty clean amp. Um, so far, the only thing I've had to do is modify the tank coil, which, which is right there. The one that was in here was about two turns too short and somebody had cut it. And then they had the band switch all set up funky. I don't... Went ahead and deleted all of that. Of course, it's got a little bit of an aftermarket fan on it. And this fan almost guarantees that you'll never be able to get this amplifier hot. Um, let's take a minute. Let's flip it up on its side so you guys can see the bottom side of this thing. It's in pretty good condition. Caps are not leaking, they've been tested. The relays are all in really good shape. Um, the input tune set up pretty good. The bottom of the board where it's normally all left off isn't messed up. The switches aren't all messed up and everything on this thing works. Um, the only thing that I have found that doesn't work correctly or period appropriate is the meter. And we're not gonna even get into that, but the light bulb was burned out, so. Um, let's see here. Output, we've got it in high, function, operate, sideband. Preamp is working. Um, just real quick over here. This is a 1000 watt slug in peak, 1000 in average, and 5 watt slug in reverse. So we'll click the amplifier into standby. I don't want to. So we're putting our whole 30 watts into it as we normally would. Let's go up here. I don't want to, want to, want to. That's our pass through, pass through tune. So what we're measuring is the RF's ability to come in from the radio, go through the amplifier, go and find its way out to the dummy load, which is very little impedance bump on this thing. So now we'll put this into operate. We are on high. Hello, one, two. The tubes are at 110% each. Hello, audio, one, two. Here's our input tune. Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two. Hello. It's about as low as we're going to get it. These things are not known for making a lot of watts. They're a great little driver amplifier though. So let's see, we got it on high. But oh, one, two. That's with 30 watts of drive making 200 watts of power. But oh, one, two, one, two. Low. But oh, one, two. But oh, well, that's a little odd. <laughs> that is definitely odd seeing slightly more power out of it on low than we are on high. Most of these Palomars, the way they work, is they'll drop out the driver tube. Well, that's not the case with this one. Let's see if I can do this and not get shocked. Did they get the leads backwards? Somebody soldered the leads on backwards. Hold on. Well, that was fun. <laughs> okay, so now on low. Oh, 180. High. Oh, solid 200. <laughs> God. Um, some odd reason somebody pulled the switch out and flipped it around. The wires weren't backwards, or just the switch was physically orientated backwards. It's all good, it's fixed. Um, let's see here, sideband delay. AM. All right, so let's 
right on sideband. Hello, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hello, audio. One, two, one, two, audio. It's working perfectly. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. Well, as you guys can see over here in the corner, I have some rubber feet set up for this thing. I'm gonna drill and smash in here some 632 threads, uh, some crush nuts, and we're gonna make it so it's got four new feet on the bottom of it. Because I don't want these countertop get scratched or the top of their piece of equipment or the shelf they set it on. Um, it's got two feet on it now. And this is one of the feet that was on the bottom. It's all messed up. So we're going to throw that in the effort bucket. So let me get the feet put on it. But the tin on this amp is in really good shape. So I'm excited. I think somebody's going to be able to use this as a driver. And it's going to... I think it's ultimately just going to work out to be a really good thing all the way around. So let me do this, get the tin on it, and we'll come back and wrap this up. Well, <clears throat> it's a 90A. It's a white face. I got one more of these I got to do. It's a blue face. It's a light blue, like Robin blue face 90A. The only one I've ever seen like it. I'm not saying it's rare because it's, well, it's not, but... I think honestly what we're going to ask for this is $200 plus the ride. And it's been like 30, 40 bucks. These things are really super light. Whoever ends up buying this, you need to know that you're going to have to take the lid off because I've got the tubes encapsulated in foam in here. Encapsulated in foam. So you have to take the lid off, pull the foam out before you can go and use it. It's very straightforward. It's a good little amp. It needs to go find a new home. I don't care where it goes, but it can't stay here. So at this point, you guys know the drill. Feel free to call, text, whatever you got to do to get my attention. But this thing is ready to go to a new home. So on that note, I'm going to say thanks to the Patreons, thanks to XS, Siglent, McMahon, Berg, Coaxial Dynamics, and especially to all of you guys out there that are waiting for me to do something other than just deal with my friend's estate. Um, I've got a lot of that coming here this next month. And I still have the big box to go. Can we say 15,000 watts? For stupid low price? Like, talking maybe 30 cents on the watt? Yeah. Gentlemen, I appreciate every single one of you guys. I'm just moving on, trying to get the last couple of these out of the way. I don't have very many of them left to go. On that note, I'll say thank you. I appreciate you all tuning in and following along. And we'll see you. Click, click.